right, campaigners, please form an orderly line. We'll get you in and out of Colorado quickly before the election. Shape up, people. Dr. Ben Carson, wake up. Time to go. You're stopping in Colorado Springs, Castle Rock, and Aurora. Single file, everyone. Bill Clinton, keep your hands to yourself. You're in Pueblo, Denver, then Fort Collins today. Governor Gary Johnson. Hey, Gary, did you forget? You got a rally scheduled Sunday afternoon, Colorado Christian University. Who's that in the back there, just a little behind? Ah, uh, Donald Trump, yes. Step right up. You have an event Saturday night at the National Western in Denver. Hillary Clinton. Has anyone here seen Hillary Clinton? No? Not in line to come through Colorado before the election at this point? All right, folks, let's go. Move on through. Let's get this election over with. So while the campaigners line up like a grade school class headed to recess, the real children are the people who vandalized the Trump campaign office in Denver today. Volunteers found the graffiti on the office in Cap Hill when they arrived for the day. Vandals sprayed some unrepeatable words on the windows and the walls. Campaign does plan to file a police report. Republicans have closed the gap with Democrats in early voting in Colorado. Magellan Strategies, a conservative polling firm, says the late numbers of the Secretary of State's office today show that Republicans now have the tiniest of leads in submitted ballots and in-person voting. More than 1.6 million Coloradans have voted already. Democrats and Republicans both make up 35.3%. Republicans have an 80-vote edge. 27.9% are from unaffiliated voters. That tells us nothing other than the general engagement level. And here's our standard disclaimer. We don't know how people voted, just which parties are turning out their voters. This Tuesday will be the first time for many voters to cast a ballot, whether they just turned 18 or they've just never voted before. This election season is, is not the first time Ina Hansen has cast a ballot. Far from it. At 107 years old, she is the oldest person in Colorado to submit a ballot so far. Perhaps the most important civics lesson we could learn comes from a small room inside a nursing home. I've always voted and thought that's what I should do. And so I just go vote every time. The small room where Ina Hansen recently filled out her ballot, which was more difficult than it usually is. I voted, made a choice, may not be the right one, but it was the one for me at the time I voted. Like so many other Americans, she was troubled by the choice. It doesn't seem to me like our candidates this time have been quite like they've been in the past. Maybe I just don't remember. And at 107, she's had her experience of choices. But I have voted for every election since FDR. Think about the names on the ballots she's seen since then. Ronald Reagan was her favorite. This year, those two names at the top were not. I voted for the Libertarian because I didn't want to vote for either one of the others. Sometimes you have to do what you have to do. At a time when so many people are considering not even voting, Ina has one piece of advice. If we don't vote, we can't complain, can we? Good advice, Ina. Something we're sure you'll continue to pass along well into your next presidential election. I just live an everyday life and I guess the Lord has decided he doesn't want me yet. Something tells me that's going to take a while. Ina did say politics is getting a lot dirtier than it ever has been, but she told me she has an advantage. If she hears something she doesn't like, she just turns her hearing aid down. Ina was born in February of 1909. Four other voters who were born in that year have submitted ballots in Colorado too. I like Ina's secret. That's a good That's one there. A good one, just, yeah. just turn the Wish I had down. one. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Steve. Hey, even with our shift to all mail voting in Colorado, our state still has to make sure that every single polling place is accessible to anyone who wants to vote in person. It's quite the effort. Nelson Garcia took a look. I'm Judge Cho. I'm with the Secretary of State's office. Before every ballot is counted, before every winner is chosen, this man must make sure. Sometimes the door doesn't work. Every voter can cast a vote. Judd Choate is the state election director for Colorado. But it would be great if you had these lines. He is driving from pole to pole. Next left. 1,200 miles in the last 10 days. To make sure every site is ADA compliant. I would say every polling place has a problem or a potential problem. From chairs in the way. That's why it's movable. To ramps that are too steep. 8.3% of a grade or less. And so this is 8.4. Choate wants local officials to know these issues 
so they can be fixed. So it's nice that when we do have these inspections that our work is validated and that our voters can feel good about the, the locations we have. To also make sure the touchpads and audio ballots are functional as well and that wheelchairs can get to the voting booth. And the person that's in the wheelchair or the blind man who is using a tapper to come into a voting location, that vote is just as important as my vote, as the governor's vote, as the president's vote. And one of the things you have to do is make sure that the elevator works. So it's good that we have these inspections to make sure that things keep working throughout the process. Clearing the way for all voters, one poll at a time. For next, I'm Nelson Garcia. Chode estimates that 5 to 10 percent of voters who come to the polls will have some kind of disability. And he says that his team will have personally inspected about two-thirds of the state's polling places. May I make a recommendation? This is the point where we point you toward something, anything that's not ours, but is worth your while. Check out the USA Today story on Craig, Colorado. It's called Coal Mining Town's Fate Hangs on Election Day. Trevor Hughes is the reporter. He's a friend of Nex. He explores the high stakes for that coal town that's worried Hillary Clinton might just put the place out of business if she's elected. So Craig is Donald Trump country. Opinions vary across Colorado. Rare, though, is the town that wonders if its entire existence is up for a vote in November. Trevor Hughes' article is definitely worth a read. You'll find a link on the next Facebook page. Anastasia Bolton does not cover politics for Nine News, but she is passionate about the power of voting. She was born in Russia and voted for the first time in 2008 after becoming a naturalized citizen. And despite all the nasty rhetoric this year, she treasures her vote. For many of you who were born in this country, voting is a right. To me, it's a privilege. I was born in Moscow, Russia. I immigrated to this country in the mid-90s. My first presidential election was in 2008. I had just become a citizen. I registered immediately, and I was proud to go vote. I didn't do the mail-in ballot. I went to my polling place because I wanted to know how it felt to actually matter. To be heard, and for my voice, to count. I touched that machine ever so gently to make sure I was doing the right thing and I apologize. This is emotional for me even still. So when I watched the inauguration of my first president, I cried. It was slightly embarrassing because I was on a treadmill at the gym. Apparently I'm a public crier. <laughs> so. I looked at him and I said out loud, this is my president. Russia is a place where strong vocal members of opposition are mysteriously or not so mysteriously killed in the streets, in the heart of the city. The place where being a journalist is dangerous, that's where I'm from. And while it's not all bad, I choose, I am lucky enough to be able to choose to live here. I'm an American. I raise my family here. I vote here. It makes me mad when people are cavalier with their privilege, when they say it's not important or they won't participate because they're mad and nothing will change. I am passionate about our democracy. I am excited to cast my ballot because I cannot wait to be heard. I know it matters, and I am certain I will count. Next rolls on at various speeds, a couple of miles per hour in the case of the museum being rolled through downtown this weekend, and as fast as you can run if you want to keep up with Ralphie and the generations of CU students at Ralphie's side. And our Friday night tradition, it'll improve your day or your money back next. If music has soul, then it just might have life. Two, three, four. Mayerly Lopez is just learning to play violin in the orchestra program at the Bruce Randolph School in Denver. She's learning to play 
on a violin donated to the school through the Bringing Music to Life instrument drop. I thought maybe it's going to break easily because it looks pretty old, so I was like, it's not going to last me long, I'm going to have to change pretty soon. What she didn't know is what this violin means to David Necker, not because it was his, but because it was his father's. And he cared for that violin and played it for 84 years. This violin. They looked at me like they trusted me. Certainly has new life. Well, I think that's what music's all about. It lives its own life and it lives on and on and on. And it's a connection for all of us. So I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket again. It's like, hello, that's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. Grab a Nine Cares Colorado Shares box at King Supers all this month. Your five or ten dollar donations provide food for fellow Coloradans in need. Donate one today. It was a day I'll never forget. I was covering six elementary school kids in Florida. They won a contest to go watch a space shuttle launch. It was the Challenger launch. Thirty years later, I caught up with those kids, now middle-aged adults with families and great jobs. They all share this common bond, and that bond is the lessons they learned that day. Lessons about life, lessons about mortality, lessons about living life to the fullest. It's lessons that they understand now and are trying to teach their own children. At camp, we believe all children should have superpowers, like the power to feel safe and the power to be protected. But each year in Colorado, thousands of children are victims of child abuse and neglect. You can help by supporting Kemp in their efforts to prevent child abuse. Kemp treats abused children, trains professionals, and conducts research to ensure a healthy and hopeful future for these innocent victims. Learn more at kempe.org and give a child the power to be a kid again. A museum will be moving through the streets of Denver this weekend. It's not some weird hipstery thing where you climb on and off a bus that they call a museum. No, it's an actual museum rolling through the city. Kirkland Museum and all of it is being moved from 13th and Pearl to 12th and Bannock. Right now the building's propped up with steel beams. It's sitting on six wheels. That move starts today. Tomorrow it should be in the street and it should be in place by Sunday. Whole thing is controlled remotely, kind of like a remote controlled car that's actually a 150 ton historic building that's moving really slowly. No, it's not going to be a speedy move. We're going to be going about three to four miles an hour. Uh, and depending on if everything goes really well, it's four to six hours. If it takes a little bit longer, it could go, it could go longer than that. The building's going to tell us how fast we can go. Months ago, staff packed up the exhibits, moved them into storage. That museum should reopen in its new location next fall. The CU football team's getting a lot of attention lately. That's what happens when you don't stink. And that means more attention for Ralphie as well. There's an entire exhibit dedicated to her at the CU Heritage Center right now. All five Ralphies over the years and all the student handlers who have run onto the field at her side since 1967. In fact, the school's current program director ran with Ralphie. Favorite part about the new exhibit about Ralphie, it's just, it's, it's truly special to see all the history in one place talking about all the years that Ralphie has been running for the university. Um, it's just such a great tradition, and just to see all the people that have been involved in the program over the years. Exhibit commemorates Ralphie's 50th year. Ralphie's 15 handlers each season have to try out. They are legit student athletes who get varsity letters for their effort, though there's no athletic scholarship available. Today would have been Walter Cronkite's 100th birthday, the legendary broadcast journalist, a role model for so many of us in the business. You know, Cronkite's become seen as the epitome of the straight newsman, just the facts. But consider some of the defining moments in his career at CBS News. He's remembered for the moment that emotion took its toll as he anchored coverage of JFK's assassination. And a pivotal moment in his career and our nation's history was when he offered his analysis of the Vietnam War. Walter Cronkite, the legend, passed away in 2009. Grab a cold one. Next is about to make you a sandwich you can pack for this weekend. Danielle Grant has a delicious forecast and will pile it high with nexty things to do. And we find every Friday is sunnier if we give some thought to one fundamental question. What is your good news? 
range of affordable health screenings, including new testosterone level checks for men and women. Find a fair near you this weekend and take charge of your health. The Nine Health Fair. Everyone deserves a decent place to live. Everyone. Todos. Decent shelter is something we all need to thrive. When a future homeowner partners with Habitat for Humanity to build or improve a home. Build. Build. They build a better future for themselves and their families. For my family. For my family. For, for my, my family. family. Para mi familia. Your support empowers a family to help themselves. Help. 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 Assiste. Your support helps another family in your community or around the world achieve strength, stability, self-reliance. Strength. Strength. Fuerza. With a little help, we all have the potential to stand on our own. Potential. 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 Through shelter, we empower. Visit HabitatMetroDenver.org to provide help to families like these today. I've got children, we got to come together and share the good feeling. Cause nothing ever gonna make this world better if we don't start believing that love really, really, really is the answer. Everybody join hands cause it's time now. up one another shine a light from every heart These are the stories we love telling. The Colorado spirit, hard at work. Join us for Nine Cares Colorado Shares. It's Saturday, November 12th from 7 to 4. We need your help. Donate non-perishable food, clothing, toys, and cash. We'll be at over 30 locations throughout Colorado. Come visit members of our team at one of the five metro locations. Share your donation stories. Use the hashtag Beyond9. Head to 9news.com for more details. Helping our neighbors, giving back. We'll see you at Nine Cares Colorado Shares. Did you know that one in three women in the United States experience rape, physical violence, and or stalking by an intimate partner in their lifetime? This could be your mother, sister, daughter, or best friend. Safe House Denver provides safe shelter and comprehensive services to adults, children, and youth experiencing domestic violence. Visit safehouse-denver.org to learn how to help someone you suspect is experiencing abuse or to learn about volunteer opportunities, donations, and other ways you can get involved. Hi there, meteorologist Daniel Grant here in the Weather Center. Hey, you know what? Today, once again, another gorgeous one. Plenty of sunshine out there. Temperatures in the 70s. We have been breaking records left and right around here, but I think we actually might break another record. We're talking about potentially the latest snowfall that we have seen here in the Denver metro area. November 21st, all the way back there in 1934. That was the longest time it took to see snowfall. And with those long range models, I think it might be then or even beyond before we start to see some of those flakes flying here in the Denver metro area. Storm system though pushing in across portions of southwestern Colorado. This will bring the San Juans a little bit of snow. Areas really above about 10,000 feet. We'll see most of that moisture. Could see about four to eight inches through this weekend. Tonight we're down to 41, partly cloudy skies, and tomorrow a pretty nice one. In fact, we're back to the upper 60s with a few clouds in the late afternoon. Otherwise, the 60s stick around for the majority of next week. Kyle, did you really put my face on a meaty sandwich. In fairness, that was actually Steve Steger. And ah. under the bus he goes. Mm. Dum, 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 it, looked, dum. it looked delicious though. Yeah, it, it did look like a delicious good sandwich. Delicious Daniel right. sandwich. Thank you, Danielle. <laughs> All right, so let's make plans for this weekend that have nothing to do with politics. Let's kick back and relax. Next style. Here are nine suggestions. Offer to rake leaves for a neighbor, then pile them in front of their political yard sign. Play next license plate bingo. First person to spot 25 cues wins. Take the last three nasty emails you've received and read them out loud, preferably in public. It's a riot. Go on a hike. Bring a trash bag. Enjoy our beautiful state and make it more so along the way. Guarantee you, you'll feel great. 
jump aboard the A-Line right down to Union Station. It's a gem of our community. And if you're not worried about getting any place on time, the A-Line's a breeze. Hit up a Denver brewery. Sit on the patio. Point your face to the sky like a sunflower. No one will think you're weird, I promise. Better yet, do the same thing, only at a brewery in the suburbs, where they'll allow you to have your dog on the patio. Note, either brewery adventure can be accomplished with a child instead of a dog. But should it? Go for a drive. And don't come home until you see a sign that makes you smile. Send it to us. Hashtag hey next. And lastly, visit the 16th Street Mall. <laughs> I, I'm just kidding. Be safe, everybody. Have a great weekend. Anastasia Bolton's commentary opened the floodgates with tear ducts and emails. This is just a smattering of what we've seen so far. Some of the most striking thoughts next. Thank you. Mm. You make me feel coming. so young. You make me feel so spring has sprung. <laughs> and every time I see you. You're not fooling anybody, you know. <laughs> Think young. Pass it on. <laughs> a message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Donate at this year's Nine Cares Colorado Shares. It's Saturday, November 12th from 7 to 4. All guys in heaven right now are looking down and and waving and saying hello and everything is beautiful. Any vets who have cameras, hand them over. Their memories of the war that changed their lives were focused on the faces that won't be in the group photo. And then we'll get something with the blue shirts as well. Not many of these people knew each other before this weekend. Bill, get in there. It didn't take long for them to relate. These men and women are very humble. They don't ask for anything. They never did ask for anything. They don't expect anything. And they deserve everything. Everything. You can just shout out your answer. What do you miss most about your time when you were serving? They missed thoughts from home. So does anybody miss mail call? Mail call. Staff Sergeant Tony Bushabai. We got a Lieutenant Colonel Martha Baker. Sergeant Earl Lammers. Machinist made first class Jerry Dickinson. One more reminder of a time long ago. You know, the one thing when we were in the service, I guarantee you everybody loved mail call. <laughs> For everyone on this flight, war was a short chapter of their lives. And when I would get mail, it was like I was sitting in my living room. It may sound silly, but this gave me tears. The real story is what came. What can I say? After marriage, children, family, life. That's yeah, something else, isn't it? The sum of life. This is wonderful. I never expected anything like this. <laughs> is made up of different experiences. This is one. Oh, it's wild. <laughs> it's wild. They will never forget. Team Challenge is the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America's endurance training and fundraising program. When you join, you'll help fund cures for Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. With our half marathon training program, you'll train with experienced coaches for over 16 weeks to run or walk a half marathon at an exciting destination race, including Chicago, Napa, Nashville, Lisbon, Las Vegas, and others. Choose your challenge. Teams forming now. I'm former Major League pitcher Tommy John. You may know me from the elbow surgery that bears my name. But with Lou Gehrig's disease, there is no comeback. It robs you of the ability to walk, talk, and even blink an eye before it takes your life. That's why I need you to spread the word about the National ALS Registry, a vital research program to find the cause, treatment, and cure. Visit ALSA.org to learn more. Together, we can strike out Lou Gehrig's disease. We're ending the work week the way we always do here on Next with something to make everybody smile. Today, photojournalist Corky Scholl went out to Cheeseman Park to ask people our favorite question. What's your good news? 
and save us the email. We know this isn't news, it's life. Right now we are in uh, City Park, Denver, Colorado. It's a beautiful Friday. Nico, he's looking at squirrels. <laughs> it's pretty cool to see everybody out enjoying the community and enjoying the fresh air and beautiful weather. <sighs> Especially during election season, it's nice to have some, some positive days that feel good, for sure. <laughs> okay, I'm happy about my kids. They make me really happy. <laughs> Another beautiful day in paradise. This has really been phenomenal weather. I'm happy about, uh, I've got a place to, a shelter over my head. I've got food to eat. Uh, not everybody has that. <laughs> right now I'm happiest about my one month old baby. He's healthy and happy and bringing us a lot of joy in our lives. Are you helping brother? Yes, he keeps getting out. I'm happy about our duplex that we moved into six months ago because uh, we were all living in a one bedroom. So now everyone has their own room. I'm happy about a lot of things right now. I have a beautiful fiance, that's a positive thing, and I'm excited. We'll probably get married the next summer. It's just a beautiful day, beautiful view, beautiful Denver. That's a lot to be thankful for. Some good news there from City Park. Boy, Anastasia Bolton's piece struck a lot of people. Kristen Kreitz writes, it was breathtaking. Jeff Reeb, thank you for sharing and being real. Anastasia Chip Case says, sitting here with tears in my eyes. So awesome, thank you. Becca Colleen writes, absolutely beautiful sentiment and one of the darkest elections we've ever had renews my faith in America. And Lisa Tromke says, so proud to have Anastasia Bolton as a fellow American. Yeah, me too, Lisa. Maybe we can convince Anastasia to come hang out with us more often when we see you next time.